Today we have shocking news about the Apple iPhone 13 and that's coming up right after this. So today we've got plenty more to share about the Apple iPhone 13, we've got plenty of good news but unfortunately some bad as well. Before we get started though, please like the video if you're an Apple fan, let me know in the comments what your most wanted iPhone 13 feature is, and if you're one of the people that haven't already, then hit subscribe now so you don't miss a thing. So the first story of the day is that Apple have placed orders for TSMC's 4 nanometer chips and that TSMC are even preparing to produce their latest 3 nanometer chips. A new report from Digitime states that TSMC is preparing the 3 nanometer chipsets and they're going to offer 15% faster chips with 30% less power consumption. Now straight up this is unfortunately not for the iPhone 13 and although they are preparing production it's not happening just yet. Even the 4 nanometer chipset that Apple have ordered, these are for future Macs and not the iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 is going to be using the A15 chipset which is on an enhanced 5 nanometer process but in current times it's still going to be the best performing smartphone chip available. Thankfully another DigiTimes report also tells us that Apple has priority status from TSMC and while we do have a global chip shortage, TSMC are ramping up production in preparation for the iPhone 13 and it's going to be ready in Q3 of this year which means hopefully there's going to be no shortage of iPhones. Next up, we've got news from Wall Street Journal that the iPhone 13 is coming with Touch ID. According to a recent report, they're going to be using an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner under the display and that this is going to be provided by Qualcomm. Now, ultrasonic is the more secure method, with optical being the cheaper option, so this is great news for Touch ID fans. At the same time, this is the only report I've seen stating this information, so hopefully it's true, but we're going to have to wait and see if others back this up. There was also a report from CNET which states that Apple will be lowering the prices this year to better compete in the market, but to be honest, it all looked like estimations with no sources given. Trendforce also issued a report though and they predict that it won't be cheaper, but it's also not going to be any more expensive. Trendforce predict that Apple are going to be keeping prices exactly the same as last year and this is to maintain their market share for the high-end smartphones. If it's true, it's still great news as it means no price bump in the iPhone 13. Trendforce also mentions in their report, however, that 512GB is going to be the maximum storage capacity for the iPhone 13, while many other leakers have suggested a 1TB option for the pros, they disagree and say it's not going to be happening this year. We've also got more news coming forward to say that it's going to be the iPhone 12s and not the iPhone 13. This is primarily because it's only minor design changes from the predecessor, but it's also because 13 is seen as an unlucky number, so it's something that they may want to skip over. Until we get solid confirmation on this though, we're still going to refer to it as the iPhone 13 in these videos. But that's it for this week's update, of course, as usual, we're now going to run through the expected specs, design and pricing of the whole of the iPhone 13 series for those of you that are excited for launch. For my regular viewers, you guys have seen this, so just skip to the next video, but if you're new here, then make sure you hit subscribe and we'll get right into it. So first up, we've got the iPhone 13 mini. With the iPhone 13 mini, we get a 5.4 inch OLED display. It's expected to have a 2340 by 1080 resolution and this gives us 465 pixels per inch, but it's only going to be a 60 hertz display. On the front, we get a notch that's going to house the selfie camera and face ID and on the back, we get a dual camera setup with a wide and an ultra wide camera. It will of course be powered up by the new A15 Bionic and it's expected to come with 4 gigabytes of RAM and a choice of 64, 128 or 256 storage. It's coming with a 2406 milliamp hour battery with at least 20 watt fast charge and it will support wireless charging. We get Bluetooth, 5G and Wi-Fi 6 and the phone is of course going to ship with iOS 15. I'm expecting the iPhone 13 mini to start from around $700 but I'll update the price as soon as we get an accurate leak. Next up we get the standard iPhone 13. With the iPhone 13 we get a 6.5 
6.1 inch OLED display. It's expected to have a 2532 by 1170 resolution and this gives us 460 pixels per inch but again it's only a 60 hertz display. On the front we get a notch to house the selfie camera and the face ID and on the back we've got a dual camera setup with a wide and an ultra wide camera. It will of course be powered by the new A15 Bionic and we get 4 gigabytes of RAM and a choice of 64, 128 or 256 storage. It's coming with a 3095 milliamp hour battery with at least 20 watt fast charging and again it does support wireless charging. We get Bluetooth, 5G and Wi-Fi 6 and the phone is going to ship with iOS 15. I'm expecting the iPhone 13 to start from $800 but again I'll update the prices as soon as we get an accurate leak. Next up, we've got the iPhone 13 Pro. With the iPhone 13 Pro, we get a 6.1 inch OLED display, but this time it's got a 2532 by 1170 resolution, which gives us 460 pixels per inch. But on the iPhone 13 Pro, it's gonna be a 120 Hertz LTPO display. On the front, we get a notch to house the selfie camera and the face ID. And on the back, we get a triple camera setup as well as a LiDAR scanner. The configuration is gonna be made up of a wide angle, an ultra wide and a telephoto camera. It will of course be powered by the A15 Bionic and it's expected to come with 6 gigs of RAM and a choice of 128, 256, 512 and even 1 terabyte storage. It's coming with a 3095 milliamp hour battery with at least 20 watt fast charge and wireless charging is supported. We get Bluetooth, 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and it's of course going to ship with iOS 15. I'm expecting the iPhone 13 Pro to start from around $1050 but again this is is just an estimate. Finally, we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max. With the iPhone 13 Pro Max, we get a 6.7 inch OLED display. It's expected to have 2778 by 1128 resolution, and this gives us 458 pixels per inch. Now again, this is gonna be a 120 Hertz LTPO display. On the front, we get the notch with selfie camera and face ID, and on the back, we get a triple camera setup plus the LiDAR scanner. The configuration is gonna be made up of a wide, an ultra wide, and a telephone photo camera. Like the Pro, it's coming with the A15 Bionic. It's expected to come with 6 gigs of RAM and a choice of 128, 256, 512 or 1 terabyte storage. It's coming with a 4,352 milliamp hour battery and again we expect at least 20 watt fast charge as well as wireless charging. We get Bluetooth, 5G, Wi-Fi 6 and the phone ships with iOS 15. Now this is the most premium and we're expecting the iPhone 13 Pro Max to start from around $1,150 but again, I'll confirm this as soon as we get a leak. So it's great that we've got so much information on the iPhone 13 series and with launch in September, it's not too long until the official reveal from Apple. Thankfully, there is expected to be plenty of stock for the iPhones and Apple are reportedly not going to be affected by the chip shortage that is causing so many other companies problems. Who out there is excited for the iPhone 13 and are you disappointed that there may not be one terabyte options? But thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, smash a thumbs up. If you didn't hit the thumbs down twice and ask I'll see you guys in the next one.